I'm Steve Orr, Distinguished Architect at Cisco. So as Tom kind of teed up, we're here to talk about cloud management for Catalyst. So it was announced today. Uh, again, some of, this, some of this people may have seen, but what we're really talking about is, hey, we're talking about common hardware is really where Cisco's kind of pivoting on this, right? So uh, we have our uh, best-in-class Meraki, best-in-class Catalyst, and what we're actually allowing them to do is customers to pick their, pick their, choose their own adventure, right? I've got Catalyst switches, Catalyst APs, and uh, I can choose if I want to go to be uh, managed or monitored by the Meraki dashboard, or I can stay where I am and utilize the features of DNA and DNA Center, uh, CLI, third-party tools, whatever you're doing today to manage, configure, monitor the network, we're open to it all. So. Um, moving on, one of the key things that we didn't talk about today, uh, earlier in some of the announcements, I just want to give kind of a lexicon change. So if we're talking about common hardware, we have different modes of operation. So the key thing for us is we talk about DNA mode, which is basically a catalyst switch or a catalyst access point, DNA license, DNA features, that's a DNA mode box. Same thing with Meraki mode. If it's a catalyst box, Meraki license, Meraki feature set, Meraki mode. So kind of, we try to keep it pretty simple. So if you have any questions, this is an easy way to kind of help us navigate you through uh, which path, you know, of the choose your own adventure you're taking. So with that quick intro, I'm gonna turn it over to Alex. Alex, he's gonna go over uh, the Catalyst migration and I'm gonna come back and talk about the monitor mode. Yeah, we have two aspects, right? So there's monitor and management. And with the Catalyst migration to Meraki management, as this is so aptly titled, uh, the whole idea behind this is being able to take a, you know, a Catalyst 9300, uh, issue a few commands and be able to convert it into effectively a Meraki switch. And so what that means is that not only do you get like the monitoring aspect that Steven's going to talk about, but you get the management, the, you know, provisioning from dashboard and that complete Meraki experience. That also involves like code upgrades, all the things that you would get out of a Meraki device. And there are two, two ways we can go there. Uh, today, uh, this would be a brownfield like you know, conversion where we're migrating uh, from Catalyst or the DNA persona or mode, man, terminology is difficult, uh, to Meraki. And that be, that's where we actually issue a few commands I'll walk through here in a moment and uh, turn it into a Meraki switch. Uh, and there's also the ability to migrate back. So if a customer's you know, needs change or like the deployment changes, uh, there is the ability to migrate back. Um, we won't be blocking that by any means. Uh, the initial release of this will have, uh, at least as of today, will be these models. And you may be familiar, these are the initial release models for the C9300. Uh, we do intend on expanding that out further, but uh, this is where we will start. Uh, the introduction of the ability to migrate is in iOS XE 17.8.1 and above. And we will support the 9300 modules as well as that 3850 4X 10G module. And the MS390 modules technically work in there as well. So if you were to you know, be looking around for hardware, those should be able to be plugged in and uh, work right away. Stacking still works? Yes. Yeah, stacking should actually work the same as far as like, it's still stack wise, it's still those are the election and all that fun stuff. The nice part is, is that since we manage the configuration aspect, you don't have to worry about like setting your stack members to specific priority levels, all that good stuff. So, um, and we do uh, effectively like stack upgrades. So like if you plug a member in and it's uh, running an older code, it'll upgrade off the stack. So it, it's kind of fun. Will it convert it automatically from, so if, if you plug in a member that was originally um, DNA mode, will it automatically convert it no, to Rocky mode? It will not. Um, and there's actually a reason for that, and I kind of, I'll explain it here in a moment. And if I don't touch on it, please just remind me. Yes. What, how does that affect like the MS390, like Meraki switch, right? Which is, I think, a 9300 under the hood with Meraki. I mean, it, it seems like that may be cannibalizing that a little bit. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think the, the biggest thing here is we're trying to move towards uh, that, you know, that shared or common hardware. So uh, as of right now, like we don't, uh, this isn't out yet, right? And um, we don't have like a, effectively a part that you can order that's in like a Meraki mode. Uh, and so the 390 is still, you know, going to be the, the offering that we have in that portfolio or that area. But yeah, I mean, the future is going to be interesting, I think. I don't have like a really good like way to like explain it at this point because I think it's still a work in progress. Yeah. So I mean, right now, like if you're a Meraki customer, the, the key would be, and I need to switch, you order the MS390. What the uh, migration flow right now is targeting those customers that have uh, deployed Catalyst 9300s that either may have, and we'll talk about the deployment models in a minute, but may have a Meraki wireless already, uh, may 
have branch offices that they're looking to utilize the Meraki feature set. And this is a great way to bring them over to that cloud-based experience without having to do a, a rip and replace to put in an MS390, right? Perfect. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're good. Yeah, so the process actually to perform the migration is just upgrading to 17.8.1. It does like a bootloader update because we have to be able to store some uh, serial numbers so that we once we register the switch. But once you upgrade to 17.8, uh, we have a couple commands we've added. Um, there's like a show Meraki compatibility, for instance, and that'll tell you if like you have a stack, like all the members in the stack are up to date, they have the right parts, they don't have modules that are unsupported. Uh, those types of things. Um, we also have uh, once you once you validated connectivity, et cetera, with a few commands. Um, there's just one command to register, and you can register either a single member or the entire stack, and it'll pipe out a bunch of serial numbers that you can then take and claim in dashboard. And so, the next part is, and I have this little order can be swapped because you can just take and and claim those serials, configure everything, make sure like all the switches are where they need to be configuration wise, and then you can start the Meraki service and it will do as uh, we do pretty well with the zero touch provisioning. So the switch will, you know, get an address through DHCP or you can use the management port turns into a like a, effectively our local status page port and you can go in and program like a static IP if necessary. Um, and anyway, yeah, reach out to dashboard. If there's a code update, it'll pull the code down. Uh, it'll pull its configuration down and get at it, to be honest. From standpoint, optics. Three, or whether it's Meraki or Catalyst mode, it's it's the same module that you're plugging in. Is Would there be any situation where this optic is only supported in one mode versus the other? That's a great question. Uh, I think right now, like the there's the 40, uh, the 40G to 4X 10G. We don't have support for that today because there's some provisioning that has to happen on the uh, under the hood. But uh, I think as long as it's a plug and play optic, we should be OK. Um, trying to think if there's. Trying to think of any that have explicit configs. Um, if there's any that have to, you have to issue like any explicit configurations for it, that would probably uh, be a little difficult. So, um, due to the fact that it is now cloud managed and not CLI managed. So, just to be clear, this is disruptive to the stack when you convert over? Yes. Yeah. So, it is brownfield conversion, but the one big piece here is that you do have to uh, effectively like it reboots into Meraki mode. And so at that point, yeah, you would need to make sure that you have downtime scheduled uh, when that's done. Maybe jump in the gun here, but does this, when you do that migration, you're, are you basically just booting a fresh, clean Meraki image with nothing on it? Or is it porting configs over? Uh, today it does not port configurations over. Okay. I know there's a number of folks uh, working with uh, parsing the config and then using the API calls to pro provision everything. Um, I know there, we're also investigating ways to like ingest the configuration that he's going to talk about and then um, potentially make that something that we can then, uh, you know, import and effectively not, you know, make a lot of extra work uh, added on top. So but from a, a Meraki standpoint, you could still do the kind of the pre-provision, take the serial, register it, even though it's not, I haven't flipped it yet. Sure. I could get the config built, you know, line the two side by side, reboot it, it comes up, checks in, yep. pulls the config and... Yeah. Cuts my. I would actually suggest doing that. Yeah, that uh, make it a lot easier. Yeah, so that's actually, and that's why I have this order can be swapped because you could, you know, claim the switch uh, and it'll claim just like any other serial, uh, show up in dashboard, and then you can you know, configure as necessary. Um, I, I would recommend that. Yeah, because it's a lot easier to have it pull its config down and not have to sit there and hack at it while it's uh, while it's running. So. Uh, the one thing that I I like the two things I'm about to talk about a lot because I've worked on them for quite a while. Uh, in our platform, but once converted, uh, we added this with the MS390 in Switch 15, which is our current uh, beta release, and will be a part of the 9300s as well with an advanced license, and that is NetFlow and Encrypted Traffic Analytics. Uh, in this case, we are doing full AVC NetFlow. I worked with the formerly known as StealthWatch, the Secure Network Analytics team, to outline like the best possible recording configuration to pipe telemetry off to StealthWatch and StealthWatch Cloud. And so we are doing full AVC NetFlow on v4 and v6 on every port. Uh, and if you enable encrypted traffic analytics also on every port, uh, we also are exporting adaptive policy, which is security group tags. Um, I will explain that in greater detail in a, a session and a half from now. So, uh, but long story short, it is probably one of the quickest deployments of NetFlow I've ever seen, because we do a lot of the heavy lifting under the hood for provisioning the configurations uh, to the point that it literally is just 
populating out that little bit of that menu there. Uh, we do have one requirement, you have to have an SVI in the box so that we don't, uh, so we use the ASIC effectively to forward all that NetFlow traffic because it is significant. So that, that traffic is coming direct from the device, it's not going to the Meraki cloud and then back? No, yeah, absolutely. So it is directly from the switch itself. And then this one that I will get into greater detail on uh, is our take on effectively Cisco's trust sec and for data plane tagging. So uh, in this case for our wireless and switching platform today, we do have uh, the ability to attach SGTs to endpoints uh, and do something that I find incredibly uh, useful and I'm excited for what we keep doing with this functionality of being able to share context uh, over the data plane. So instead of having to have like out of band uh, control plane connections to you know various backend directory services, session services. We can literally share you know context and identity in the packet. So, um, but I will talk about this in greater detail here here soon. And let me hand this over to Stephen so he can talk about yeah, some so monitors. Just real quick before I jump into the cloud mine, the the cool part that Alex kind of skirted over a little bit is that the common hardware piece that's underneath. That's what's helping us accelerate some of this stuff, right? Um, things that you've probably seen in the Catalyst family or the I would say iOS XE DNA type family uh, services and capabilities being able to be accelerated uh, and adopted into the Meraki dashboard. So that, that's actually been a huge thing. And, and Alex isn't kidding. I mean, how long did it take us to, to pull adaptive policy? And it was, it was extremely quick Yeah. from, uh, from kind of concept to, to being able to enable it. And I think in adaptive policy, what you'll see in some of the slides as we're talking through, adaptive policies is one, is one of those things that kind of we can glue together today between a Meraki deployment and what you would see as a traditional uh, iOS XE or a DNA deployment, uh, we can actually have the two uh, families talk to each other and exchange group tags, which is one of the things that was actually really cool for me in monitor mode, uh, being able to marry the two uh, together for customers. As you know, as Alex had pointed out, we're starting with the Catalyst 9300, and as uh, Chris and Todd alluded to, we're going to get you know we're going to start with the whole fixed switching portfolio first. So if we're talking about branches or customers that have uh, Catalyst 9500s, we can actually start. Uh, doing like a monitor mode exchange SGTs if we want to do that there to the 9300s that have been uh, migrated and to the, the APs that we're going to talk about in a little bit as well. So uh, on to cloud monitoring. So why is cloud monitoring cool? Um, cloud monitoring, as they announced, can be deployed today. So basically what we're doing is taking the telemetry off the box, streaming it into the uh, Meraki dashboard essentially, right? So uh, it's I call it bring your own config. So you have your config on your box. We're not changing the config. We're adding a couple things to it so that we can stream the telemetry securely. Uh, but we're actually able to get feature uh, from a, an analytics perspective. We're able to take all that data, bring it to the Meraki dashboard, and show exactly what you would see from a Meraki dice. Like client tracking looks identical. We're dumping all that data in there, and you're able to get client tracking, health, all the cool things that we do in the Meraki dashboard today uh, just by flipping on monitor. Still allows me to do CLI still allows me to, if I want to do any other type of Ansible, you know, type of uh, configurations on it, or if I'm running Thousand Eyes as a container, I can still run Thousand Eyes on there and, and still kind of shovel that off to the, uh, to the Thousand Eyes cloud as well. So if you're running that monitoring, can you use other monitoring platforms as well? Can I send to, you know, whatever other thing and Meraki? So yeah, I, can, yeah, I can cover that. So, uh, it depends on the the way that you're sourcing that telemetry. So if you if you were doing like uh, effectively like netconf like or Yang streaming of like telemetry using the uh, the built-in functions, you can do that. Uh, you just have to make sure you don't overwrite any of the the, the streaming telemetry configs we add. Uh, other than that, yeah, I mean I have switches that are being monitored with SNMP, all sorts of other stuff. So um, it should work just fine. Is there any Meraki features from a, like a monitoring perspective? Can, can you do packet capture as an example on that? Actually, yeah, we are working on that right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So, so monitoring is coming along. So uh, while we worked on uh, migration, so monitor mode, we're we're just starting to, as Alex kind of was talking about, is what other things can we do with monitor mode now? So this is just kind of like the initial launch, and we're they're kind of roadmap and where we can take it from here. So. Um, Again, uh, initial releases. So this is where, where we, uh, we diverge just a little bit from doing migration. So in monitor mode, we can take the 92s, 93, and 9500s. Uh, day zero, you can just take it and you basically get to, to connect it to the Meraki dashboard if you've got uh, an active DNA license on the box. So iOS XE 17.3 uh, and beyond. And like I said, the licensing, anything that you have that's already essentials or advantage uh, can connect up. And we'll talk about the licensing 
just real quick, because I know you all enjoy Cisco licensing, uh, as I heard. So, much. Uh, so but it, it, let, me, let me parse this down really quickly. So what ends up happening is if you have a DNA essentials license, which is kind of the bare minimum, uh, you're going to get box level monitoring. It gets you access to the Meraki dashboard, and you're just going to basically do device box level uh, you know, traffic. If you have an advantage license, you basically have traffic analytics for clients and the box, right? So as Alex had mentioned before, right, we're doing ABC NetFlow. Those are features, DNA features that are activated by the advanced license. So that, that's really where the two licenses come into play uh, for, for monitor mode. Any differences between just the network licensing essentials and advantage? I'm sorry. In terms of features? In between what we have today? In between network oh, essentials and, and advantage. And advantage, yeah, we can take that offline if you want. I don't want to. I don't want to rat hole us into a Cisco licensing uh, discussion, which could take the whole entire session. I'm going to ask one quick one, just because I think sure. it's important. If you've got no Meraki stuff, you've got a couple of Cat Nine Ks. You want to plug them into Meraki. With if you've got DNA essentials licenses, even with no existing Meraki gear, you can still set up the Meraki portal. You don't yep. need to yeah. be an existing one hundred percent. Every, every customer today that has a CAT switch, 9200, 9, 9300, 9500, can go out to the Meraki dashboard and onboard uh, to monitor mode mm -hmm. those devices and start pulling telemetry in, start displaying client statistics. Uh, it, it's a pretty powerful tool. And uh, I know we've, uh, so Alex and I have been working on this for a while. So I have, uh, you know, 9300s that have been migrated. I have a 9200 at, at my house that hasn't. And I've been pumping traffic through it for four Four months, I think. Yeah. So, um, but, and I'm getting the same telemetry data from a 9200 that's not migrated that I'm getting from the 9300s that have been migrated. Go ahead. So when you do this, can you provision the device before you do the actual conversion? So for monitor mode, you, you, you want the device already on the network. Mm -hmm. And assuming it's already deployed, all you're going to do is you're going to go in and join it to the dashboard. There's a couple commands you have to enter to do it. But then it, you're not really kind of wholesale changing the config. I will t we'll show you, in a, just give me a minute, we'll show you some of the stuff that does happen once you associate it to the dashboard, you know, kind of provision it and onboard it. Okay. But the config itself, it allows you to still use, like if you're using a uh, what I would call a DNA advanced feature that may not exist in the Meraki dashboard, which is why you're not doing a migration, this is where you can use monitor mode to, to continue to monitor the box. Well, this, this actually came from a question that came in on Twitter where it's... Sure. You, apparently right now, correct me if I'm wrong, you can't actually migrate the existing config up. You. So that's migration. Mm -hmm. So this is monitor mode. So in migration, you're correct. Like if we're taking, well, as Alex mentioned before, if I'm going to migrate a box as a 9300, I'm wholesale moving it to the Meraki dashboard. Okay. So the question that came up was, could you provision its existence in the dashboard, mm -hmm. script, the conf script it so you can pull the config off the box, go in through the provisioning API and pre-configure it yes. Yes. so that when you do the migration, it's yeah. just a flat go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. So actually, that's actually one of the cool things too about monitor mode. The power is like if, if it's a normal Cisco device, you're not managing it with DNA Center or another tool. Once I've associated it or have it in monitor mode in the Meraki dashboard, I get access to all those Catalyst devices through the Meraki APIs, which is another pretty powerful thing. Uh, if you're looking to do some API scripting or you want to access those boxes, which, you know, today you'd have to hit every one of those boxes individually on prem. Now you've got access to, to be able to do it through the dashboard. Also means the alert the alerting framework, webhooks, all the all that fun stuff, uh, also available as well. So what we'll jump into what we'll do is we'll kind of jump into a couple of use cases that we've seen so far. This isn't an exhaustive set of use cases. This is what we've kind of you know heard right now and, and where we've kind of uh, spoken with some early trial customers. Uh, one is I got a mix of cloud monitored and cloud managed. Uh, cloud managed being, I might already be an existing Meraki customers, MS 390s, uh, Meraki access points, but I might have a Catalyst 9500 switch in my core of my, maybe it's a branch. So what this allows us to do is, you know, again, as we're going to see over the next uh, couple of years, as we're my, getting the ability to migrate those fixed switching platforms, this could be a migration opportunity. But right now, you can migrate the edge and then take the core and put it into monitor mode. So now I'm able to see like that branch, all those devices in, in a single pane of glass but I may be configuring that Catalyst 9500 by CLI. Yeah, so that's one use case we've seen. And, and actually, in one of those use cases, we've seen is adaptive policy and TrustSec meeting together, where I'm using the Catalyst 9500 to do TrustSec, and then all the managed devices, I'm doing adaptive policy and marrying them together. Uh, there's also just solely cloud monitor mode, right? So 
as, as we announced, right, we're focused on the 9300 first. So if I have 9200s, 9500s, I can still take that step to the cloud by doing monitor mode for the other devices in the network, 92s and 95s. Uh, and then kind of the third one that we've talked about is hybrid organizations. And those hybrid organizations are ones where maybe I have branches that are in Meraki, that have gone into a Meraki mode, and I've got uh, Catalyst or uh, DNA-enabled features at my headquarters, right? Could be doing SDA, could be doing a bunch of other things. Could have, uh, you know, like DNA deployed, but I'm on this migration path uh, where I want to see everything in the cloud. We've got opportunities where we can do this hybrid, right? Get, get all the devices, kind of show them in, into the network. Any questions on the, and it said this isn't an exhaustive list, this is just where we've seen uh, the, the interest in as we're moving forward. So with the hybrid organization, and you've got the, the core that's remaining in DNA mode, you'd still be able to monitor the whole, all of the branches and the core at the same time, right? Yeah, so if it's a 92, 93, 95 at the, at the campus, at the campus headquarters, you can absolutely put that in the monitor mode. And, then the, and again, your branches could be a mix of monitor managed whatever the deployment. What we're focusing on really is uh, more customer use cases, you know, kind of use case parity. What do we want to do with the customers? How can we help them migrate to the cloud is really what we're seeing most of them want to do. So we're just trying to figure out all the different kind of permutations and combinations on how to facilitate getting them to be able to see everything in a common dashboard. On that note, this is probably the most uh, most common thing that yeah. I've, uh, I've been in the various parts of Meraki for about almost seven years. and. I mean, it's pretty common that we have Meraki at the access layer. You know, we're able to provide the, it's pretty easy to do moves, adds, changes, all that fun stuff. But when we get to the core, a lot of customers do have, you know, extensive requirements around routing protocols we don't support in dashboard and all that. So, I mean, I, I find this to be probably one of the most compelling aspects, in my opinion, just because it is hard to tell a customer, uh, yeah, you can manage this stuff and see it here, but oh, that, no, I'm sorry, it's, you know, do it to, through tradi traditional means. And so having having the ability to kind of pull it all into one place means that, and I'll show this in a moment, just means that you can start kind of getting a good idea of what's going on, you know, from one place, have, not having to log into you know, multiple management platforms. But, oh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, so on that core concept, there's a CAD 9K switch that you don't have listed so far, which is a 9606R. Dare I ask, is that coming? So, so good question. So again, for, for the initial release right now, we're focused on the fixed switching platforms with so 92, 93, 95, but they are talking about, you know, break, you know, bring this to the entire Catalyst family portfolio. So it's, it's a, it's a roadmap discussion we're having now. Yeah. Cause for like big campuses, right. You know, you run. Into yeah, absolutely. Got to get more. Yeah. So we have, I'll say we haven't forgotten about them. We're just, uh, we're, we're trying to yeah. kind of do multiple phases and incremental and, and to be honest, it's get it right and then move on to the next thing. Right. So, uh, and we'll talk about it later today, what's going on in, in the wireless space as well from uh, what we're doing here. Thanks. All right. Uh, so real quick, and we'll, we'll roll through this so Alex can get to the demo. Uh, this goes back to what changes on the box. So there's a couple things when you onboard it. This is, again, monitor mode, right? So when we're doing monitor mode, there's a couple things that happen. Uh, we do AAA. We set up a Meraki user, uh, put some B2I ports on there, lock it down. And then we do SSH. There's a couple other pieces for an interface config. We need a loop back. We're basically making a tunnel, right, back to the Meraki dashboard to securely transmit all the data. Uh, so we set up a tunnel, tunnel peer certificate, do IP routing on the box if it doesn't already exist, and then CDP and NetConf Yank. So real simple, real minimal config to onboard the box. Once it's onboarded, um, basically this is where all the AVC NetFlow information gets dumped into the box so that it can start you know, bringing that telemetry back to the Meraki dashboard. And the checks happen to make sure you know, during the onboarding process that nothing's getting overwritten, that, that stuff that's there already is not going to get overwritten. Uh, but also there's checks to make sure like if you take it out and it breaks, right, that you're going to be able to look at it. So um, on the services part, we wanted to throw this up here just to make sure and, you know, we kind of mitigate any questions on, hey, how are we getting this stuff back to, to Meraki? That's what the tunnel interface is for. We're basically doing an SSL tunnel, you know, using SSL to secure it all the way uh, back to the Meraki dashboard, right? So, so can you put yeah. some traffic controls around that, right? I mean, if, if we're creating a tunnel out to the cloud, right, it's bidirectional. Mm -hmm. So what what controls the traffic that goes in and out on that tunnel? Um, so we do have ACLs that are um, uh, effectively attached mm -hmm. uh, to control it. And you honestly, if you have a switch, like you could you could onboard and see the whole configuration and uh, see it dumped out. I'll, I'll show what the onboarding app looks like and kind of where you go to download it. But uh, but yeah, there's there's controls in place. We make sure that if like the 
for some reason the tunnel went down, that that traffic doesn't egress any other any other possible uh, way out of the switch. So, hey, Alex, one other question that I yeah. have for you. <clears throat> when Meraki wasn't a part of Cisco, we asked a question about how much bandwidth was being consumed by sending all of his telemetry back to the cloud. And 10 years ago, it wasn't a lot. It's this definitely more now. Is there some kind of a rate limit mechanism that's built into the OS to prevent that from causing other problems on the switch? Like basically almost like a low latency queue for telemetry information that will prevent it from, you know, I don't know, running out of control or something like that. Yeah, so when it comes to, so let me, I'll, I'll give the two pits. So when you when you go to the migration mode and it turns into, you know, manage switch, uh, we still have about that one kilobit per second telemetry. Uh, a lot of that has to do with how we do telemetry. We cache it on the box and then it does, um, uh, you know, updates uh, on intervals. And so uh, in this case, we are streaming telemetry. There is more bandwidth utilization. We are optimizing it. So I think, right, I don't have an exact number right now, but it is it is it is more um, because there isn't any caching. We are just streaming it directly up to the cloud. Um, when, um, in dashboard here, uh, I've got a, a number of switches that I've added uh, in here, and you'll notice there's like some of these say monitor only, and those uh, 9300s that I've onboarded. Uh, there's some converted uh, 9300s as well, um, and you'll notice we're reporting like the software version. If we go to add switches, we have this new area, and you'll see this in your dashboard. Uh, if you log in, uh, you can click there and we'll actually be able to download the app. Uh, we have a Mac client, a Windows client, and a Linux client. Uh, it is an app image, so I'm excited about that just because no operating system left behind effectively, which is nice. So um, <laughs> it, uh, it does make it easy though, so if you have like a hot box and you need to, the one thing you have to do is this app has to have direct connectivity to the switch, so you can't have it like, there's no proxying through the cloud, et cetera. Uh, it is like it makes a direct SSH connection, but uh, yes, yeah, so you can download those apps. It is a um, uh, pretty quick though. And then I'm actually going to do so here and install it. And I'm gonna make you watch me install this uh, over video. That way you get the full experience. Yeah. We're all about the full Meraki experience. <laughs> Just at some point I do, uh, I do speed it up and make it look uh, like in fast forward mode like that. There we go. Fast forward mode. Okay, you got it automated so you can do it with an audience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been working on that for a while. <laughs> so the couple things here, we do, uh, we do have like the terms of use and we use the Meraki API uh, to actually provision the switch in dashboard. So uh, you'll notice we put that uh, API key in and we actually could then come to a page where we can select the organization that we want to onboard the switch into. Right. And the big piece here is that you can onboard multiple switches, but you can only onboard in one set into the, uh, a single organization. So if you had like multiple orgs that you wanted to do, you'd have to do those in uh, different sets. But in this case, I'm gonna SSH in here because I just like to show this, is, I'm, I'm swear to God this is actually happening. Um, but uh, in, in, you can actually add in multiple IP addresses in the list that I'll show here in a moment. Uh, but in this case, I'm just showing this, I've got two 9500s in a, uh, VSS pair effectively uh, that I'm going to onboard. I had to highlight that. I was really getting carried away there. Um, but yeah, long story short, we just put the IP address in or IP addresses. You can also specify the ports, uh, just so the colon and the port, any of the credentials. And if you're lazy like me and you do privilege level 15, you don't have to put an enable password in. Uh, and then what we actually will do is reach out to the switch and then validate that it is eligible. Uh, it's running the right firmware. And it has reachability effectively out to, out to the TLS gateway. And so we'll check the configuration and then let you know here in a moment, it's ready. When you click next, this is where we can choose. And if I had multiple switches here, we'd actually be able to choose which networks each of them go into. So you don't have to like onboard one switch at a time. Uh, the goal is to try to allow people to onboard many. Uh, I'm not sure what the limit is though. Someone will find out for me though. Uh, in this case, we show you what we're adding. So if you've previously onboarded, we'll clean up the configuration. We'll also then enable uh, NetConf Yang, IP routing, LLDP. Uh, we do add a, uh, some AAA configurations and a, a certificate for us to actually use for uh, SSH authentication. And uh, aside from that, yeah, here's that uh, uh, key. And then we have the tunnel config. And so we import some certificates for the TLS gateway and uh, have that all set up. And this is where I click the fast forward button. Quick AAA question. Sure. Have you all validated that against like running pre-existing AAA configurations to see that you don't step on, modify, or break other? AAA? That's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
We have. Okay. <laughs> I say that because yeah, we uh, initially we we we've been running this in beta for like kind of a closed beta for. Yeah, I saw it. Was seventeen seven one, and you said the minimum version was seventeen eight one. No, oh, this is set, so for monitoring. It's yeah. seventeen three. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that part's nice because that's our I think our current like long term uh, release. Uh, but in uh, what was I saying? Triple A. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, we ran into a couple issues here and there. It was fun. Um, and uh, yeah, we've been working on that and working on uh, you know t with TACAX, et cetera, and how we we're kind of working around that. So and, and I didn't see it in that configuration snip, but were those access lists for that tunnel in that configuration being applied there too? Yes, it should be. Okay. Okay. In here. Uh, long story short, though, uh, we uh, we go through. We do all the provisioning to be able to connect out to dashboard and make sure that we're able to actually then connect back and. Um, you know, provision the rest of it, the device tracking, the, the flow telemetry, and uh, the streaming telemetry. And it says device onboarded successfully, and we'll actually take you uh, to where you can click view, and it'll take you into dashboard directly to that device. Yeah, so you'll notice here I've got about nine switches online, uh, access points, etc. If I go to switch and switches, this will bring us to our list of all the switches in here. And if I sort this, You'll see these two 9500s. These are the ones I onboarded, I think, on Friday when I recorded that video. And if I click in here, a couple things you'll be able to see. Like, we'll show your port status, uh, the configuration on the interface. Like, for instance, like, uh, we call them aggregates in dashboard, but this is a port channel. Uh, and we'll tell you, like, what ports are part of that port channel. We also tell you the uh, connected device and any of the uh, raw information there. And I think this one, this is one of my ESX hosts. Um, we also report the clients that are connected. So you can see here we've got uh, you know, all these different, uh, different devices behind here. And so this is like kind of bringing in that telemetry aspect, being able to give you some uh, you know, effectively visibility into what's connected, where, et cetera.